Elon Musk needed uh, to raise some cash to pay for Twitter, and that apparently meant selling some shares of Tesla. You also have to consider that he's lost $35 billion in Tesla wealth since this stake was first announced. So you could say this is already an $80 billion deal for him. We're going to have to see where these Tesla shares eventually shake out. In this video, what Elon Musk's Twitter deal means for Tesla and Tesla stock. Let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store, so check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. It's been a very volatile week for Tesla stock. We now know the primary reason for that. Elon Musk dumping a huge number of Tesla shares to add a little bit of cash to his bank balance, probably to strengthen his Twitter deal and also give a little bit of peace of mind to lenders and everybody involved in the transaction. Either that or it was just trying to give savvy Tesla investors with a long-term investment horizon a massive buying opportunity. In either case, thanks Elon. I definitely loaded up. Tesla stock today down almost 1%, but again, very volatile volatile, wild swings, a high today of over $930 per share and a low of $870, finishing marginally down for the day. Again, a little bit of context, down over 11% over the last week, down over 20% in the last month, down almost 30% in the last six months, year to date down almost 30% and up a little over 20% in the last year. Between you and I, personally, this looks like a pretty damn good deal. Elon Musk giving Tesla stock investors, actually not Tesla stock investors, Tesla stock gamblers a little bit more insight. No further Tesla stock sales planned after today. In other words, at least relating to this transaction, no more share sales planned. That doesn't mean they won't happen, but none planned. Here we are over on the Financial Times, quote, what does Elon Musk's Twitter deal mean for Tesla? Shareholders ask whether well, plate-spinning billionaire will spend less time at car maker. The day Elon Musk landed his $44 billion Twitter coup, the Tesla chief executive flew to Boca Chica in Texas, not to relax on the sandy beach, but to attend his regular 10 p.m. meeting at SpaceX, the rocket business he also leads. The billionaire, who also oversees tunneling enterprise Boring and brain chip venture Neuralink, will have his multitasking abilities put to the test when Twitter becomes the latest spinning plate in an already precarious collection. The question for shareholders in Tesla, still the only publicly listed avenue for investors wanting exposure to Musk, is to what extent his latest curiosity will distract him. Now, I'd like to chime in here, not a whole lot. Let me be clear, there will certainly be some mental energy and some time, especially in the next few months invested by Elon Musk in this Twitter deal, but let's be clear here. <laughs> and don't take this the wrong way, especially all the software engineers out there. But writing a little bit of code to implement the changes Elon wants to see in Tesla is a far, far cry from manufacturing complex objects at scale and doing so profitably. Elon Musk is a hardcore engineer who spends 90 plus percent of his time in engineering meetings at SpaceX and Tesla solving engineering problems, the kind of things that can bankrupt a company or make additional billions of dollars in annual profits. Elon is an expert engineer, one of the world's best engineers. He has a physics-based understanding of the world. First principles thinking applies here. These are very difficult problems to solve. Elon is an engineer at heart. The changes that Elon wants to see implemented at Twitter are actually quite straightforward. A little bit of code and that's it. And I'm not trying to downplay, yes, it's going to take a little bit of time, but with an elite team of the world's absolute best engineers, best software engineers, Elon Musk could literally write an email with a handful of bullet points of what he wants done and then have a team of excellent software engineers implement the changes. He barely needs to be involved. I'm not trying to downplay the amount of time and energy that will initially be invested, but it's not as much as people might imagine. Trying to figure out how to build a reusable rocket, trying to disrupt the entire automotive industry, difficult problems. They take a lot of time and mental energy. However, instructing a team to implement clear and straightforward changes in how a social media media website operates, a little bit of code, pretty different story. Now, yes, there will be some extremely difficult challenges and problems that need to be solved, but I think it's reasonable to say the difficulty between solving problems relating to Tesla, SpaceX versus fixing Twitter are orders of magnitude apart in terms of difficulty and the necessary amount of mental energy and time required. Most of the necessary changes could be implemented by a C-grade software engineer. The most difficult problem, of course, is how do you make Twitter profitable? Kidding, that's not difficult at all. You just get rid of all the useless employees 
which is at least 50% of the current staff. No offense to everyone working at Twitter, but let's just fucking face the facts, okay? The company has, what, 6,000 plus employees? Could easily get by with two or 3,000 at most. I don't know what half the company is doing. I'm just kidding. They spend their entire day deciding whether or not this is an opinion that's allowed to exist on the platform and then making it disappear. Get rid of those people. Suddenly your overhead halves, bang. Twitter's printing insane amounts of money. Gee, that was really hard, wasn't it? Oh, Elon, that took so much time. Common mistake I see people making is projecting their own capabilities onto Elon Musk. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Elon's brain is bigger, statistically speaking, than almost every human being on the planet. He also has an incredible, and I mean an incredible, amount of energy and or willpower. The guy's been working like 80 plus hour weeks his entire adult life and never takes a vacation. I don't know how he does it without going insane. I could not do that, but I'm not Elon, and neither are you. There are many entitled Tesla shareholders who own Tesla stock and hate the idea of Elon Musk being distracted by any new projects and endeavors. Of course, it's very, very dangerous to remind these people that he's currently CEO of SpaceX and spends approximately half his week working on that company. Also, there's Neuralink and there's Boring Company. Got a load of children as well. I mean, the guy's busy and already extremely distracted and yet, oh, what's he doing? Just making the world's most valuable companies like bang, 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 bang. What is it, four plus multi-billion dollar companies he's founded in the last couple of decades? If I may be as arrogant as to suggest, I think Elon knows his own limitations and he's working within them pretty effectively. In either case, what I think and what I believe is completely irrelevant. Elon's gonna do what Elon's gonna do and if you don't like it, don't invest in any stocks of any companies that he ever has anything to do with. It's pretty simple. Quote, I've learned that it's wrong to underestimate his extraordinary energy and bandwidth, says James Anderson, guy who makes extreme amounts of sense. Portfolio manager, Bailey Gifford, one of the car makers' earliest investors and a top 10 shareholder. Quote, what we are hearing suggests that Tesla is running so well that Musk isn't or doesn't need to be involved day to day. Hit the nail on the head. Please tell me, ladies and gentlemen, what's the most important challenge of Tesla right now? Solving full self-driving. How hands-on does Elon Musk need to be in this process? Not very. No offense to Elon here, but it's not really Elon driving the ship here. He's certainly making decisions and pushing the team forward, but he's a team of AI experts. The data engine, the flywheel is already in motion. So this is almost a matter of letting the FSD program run its course. More vehicles, more data, more learning, improvement, winning. The next major distraction at Tesla, the next thing that's going to involve quite a lot of Elon's bandwidth will probably be the dedicated robotaxi vehicle likely to be unveiled next year and entering production in 2024. I personally believe over the next six to 12 months, Elon won't be super hands on at Tesla. The Austin and Berlin factories have commenced production. The manufacturing systems have already been designed. They're now just ramping up something that Tesla's done repeatedly in other factories. It's not like the very first time they're ramping a vehicle to volume production. He's not gonna be sleeping on factory floors. And of course, SpaceX, the big challenge there is Starship again, certainly taking up a lot of Elon's mental energy and bandwidth, but that's the one major issue at SpaceX. I personally think that Elon has a lot of mental energy and bandwidth right at this point in time to do other things. This is why he's decided, huh, you know what? I've got some energy and time. Let's fix this free speech thing. Otherwise democracy will crumble. In fact, it's already crumbling. Let me try to reverse that. I might buy Twitter, makes a poll, ends up buying Twitter as a result of that poll. Once a struggling startup that fumbled efforts to mass produce its cars, the business has matured almost beyond recognition. In the past two years alone, Tesla's opened its Shanghai factory, a facility in Berlin, built in record time, and its new Texas plant, where the ribbon was cut this month at a rodeo themed party hosted by Musk. Now an infographic, Musk's funding for Twitter. Musk has pledged Tesla shares of $62 billion to secure the margin loan. Let's have a look at this. In yellow here, we've got cash of $21 billion, margin loan of $12.5 billion, unsecured and secured bridging loans, $3 billion each, a credit facility, half a billion, and term loans of $6.5 billion. The brand, as in Tesla, turned a profit of $5 billion in the first quarter and is on track to sell 2 million vehicles this year. Not quite, but close enough. It harbors an ambitious goal to raise this to 20 million sales a year by 2030, which would make it larger than Toyota and Volkswagen combined. Quote, does he need to be as involved? Probably not as much as a year ago and totally not as much as two or three years ago. Absolutely agree, by the way. Quote from Gary Black. People ask a lot, especially on Patreon, what if Elon dies, blah, 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 blah. This is always my answer. You know what? Two or three years ago, that'd be a big fucking problem for Tesla. Today, not a massive deal. Sure, things will slow, but it's not the end of the company. They're on the right path. They've got the right DNA. Their lead is unassailable. With or without Elon, Tesla is going to absolutely dominate this and the following decade. Not to devalue Elon's contribution, Elon as CEO of Tesla is much better for Tesla than Elon not. The point here, the company's now at such a stage of maturity and has the right DNA, the right philosophy, huge technological advantage, the data lead, and so on. If Elon completely ceased all involvement in Tesla tomorrow, the company would still dominate. Two or three years ago, as Gary Black points out, very different story. Quote, there was going to be a time for him to do Twitter. It's now. Absolutely 
completely spot on. You know, I probably should have read this article before I made the video instead of just doing it in real time because I'm basically repeating points that are further in the article. But anyway, I agree completely. Nailed it. This is literally the time to do Twitter. Musk manages his time with a forensic level of detail, according to several people who have worked for him. His timetable used to include Monday and Tuesday at SpaceX, Wednesday and Thursday at Tesla, and Friday spent in product review at both companies, hopping between locations on his private jet while juggling emails and sending silly tweets. Quote, he was very disciplined about that rhythm, impressively so, said one former Tesla executive, who reported directly to Musk, adding that his schedule on days where he was not traveling internationally was, quote, cast in stone. At one point in time, he split his working day into five minute slots to maximize his output. By the way, I've heard this before. I do not know whether or not this is actually true. I've seen it said and repeated all over the place, but I've never actually heard confirmation from Elon that this is true. Let me know in the comments below if you guys can verify this. Make sure you include a source. And regularly puts in days that can run towards 20 hours. By the way, I do not recommend this, at least not for your health, your mental well-being, and your interpersonal relationships. Sometimes you've got no choice. Quote, I am no more worried about Twitter being a distraction from Tesla than I am about Tesla being a distraction from SpaceX, said one top 20 shareholder whose brain seems to function. Well said, sir or madam. Yet Musk will inevitably need to rely on a host of deputies at his operation. At SpaceX, he has Gwyn Shotwell, by the way. Gwyn, absolute beast. Without Gwyn, I mean, I can't even imagine how difficult it would be for SpaceX to be where they are. I don't think Gwyn gets nearly enough credit or praise. For real. Her official title at SpaceX should be MVP, if you exclude Elon. While Drew Baglino at Tesla is the most senior executive after Musk and finance chief Zach Kirkhorn. By the way, Drew and Zach, absolute beast well. They deserve a huge amount of credit. Remember, Tesla isn't a one-man show. It's not clear yet how involved Musk intends to be in Twitter's day-to-day -day management. <laughs> Spoiler alert, hardly at all. Again, there's going to be some initial oversight. It's going to be very hands-on initially. But at the end of the day, Elon's plan with Twitter is to fix shit and then just leave it the f*** alone, in my opinion. Obviously, over time, he has a great idea. Hey, let's do this. It's going to be good. I get that. There's going to be more of that as well. But really, this is just about reinstalling the principle of free speech, allowing people to express their thoughts, opinions, and ideas freely, removing the clear and obvious partisan bias within Twitter, and allowing people to share their thoughts, opinions, and ideas, you know, in the digital town square. A second former Tesla executive who reported to Musk said the chief executive typically spread responsibility around the car makers' managers rather than relying on a single traditional operations chief as he did at SpaceX. Quote, it's just the way he operates, the ex-direct added. One potential issue may be the time implications of an additional location. <laughs> spoiler alert, I mean, um, not spoiler alert, there's absolutely no chance that Twitter headquarters are going to be moving to Austin, Texas. You definitely didn't hear that here first. Quote, he now has so many more points on the map he has to go to, said the first former Tesla executive. Twitter is based in hell. Oh, I think I mispronounced that. Twitter is based in the city where you're allowed to do anything you want and break any law you want and will suffer no con- Wow, I can't, I'm really having a hard time with this word here. Twitter is based in the city where you're guaranteed to find human fecal matter on every part- uh, I just, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce this word. Sorry guys, let's just move on. No one's perfect. While SpaceX has an office outside Los Angeles and a launch base on the Texan coastline, Tesla, once confined to its Fremont plant and Nevada battery factory, now has the Texas, German, and Chinese plants also demanding Musk's attention. Quote, he loves to travel from place to place to all the factory floors and be in engineering meetings, said Walter Isaacson, who is writing a biography of the entrepreneur. By the way, can't wait for that. Quote, but he does some meetings these days virtually. Musk will have to keep an eye on the Tesla share price. His stock in the car maker forms part of the complex, hastily assembled funding for the Twitter deal. Musk has pledged $12.5 billion from a loan secured against his Tesla shares as part of a package that also includes $13 billion of debt from banks and $21 billion in cash. The day after the Twitter deal was announced, Tesla shares fell 12%, wiping more than $125 billion off the carmaker's value. Over fears, Musk would have to sell stock to stump up the remaining cash needed for the buyout. Further falls would increase the number of shares he has to ring fence as collateral on the deal. Quote, dawning on people that if he has to leverage up some more to buy Twitter, what happens if Tesla shares have further to fall? Said Jim Chanos, the hedge fund billionaire and renowned short seller who has a long-standing bet against the car maker. Yeah, that's right, Jim Chanos still hasn't learned. Don't bet against Elon. Well, all I can say, Jim, is that title of billionaire may not last much longer. I mean, I feel bad for Jim Chanos. He is an intellectually intelligent guy, but he just cannot. He just does not understand Tesla. And I mean, not even close. It's really embarrassing. I feel bad for him. I have a lot of empathy, but what can you do? You can't fix stupid. Quote, there's no room for error in Tesla's valuation. He has to keep executing. He has to keep growing at 40 to 50% per year with 30% gross auto margins, Chanos says. Gary Black said Musk's incentive now is to keep Tesla's stock price as high as he can. He expects the company to announce a share split to buoy the stock price, push for a higher credit rating to reduce interest payments. Don't get me started on Tesla's credit rating. I mean, f*** dude. Corruption or incompetence behind the scenes, something clearly going wrong there, but I'm not going down that rabbit hole. Maybe in a future video. Although there are a few business overlaps, Tesla eschews traditional advertising. Analysts and investors warn that Musk's Twitter ownership still has the potential to hurt the car maker. Quote, there's a big reputational risk from a mishap. If Musk gets a negative image and... <laughs> 
Oh, God. Uh, I mean, what planet is this guy on? Uh, he has a very, very, very negative image, at least in the eyes of some people. Again, probably most of them suffering from mental illness and or being a sheep and not thinking for themselves. But most of the mainstream media has been hating on and tarnishing Elon Musk's reputation unreasonably, unfairly and unjustly for years. So too many in the finance media. In fact, just about everyone on planet Earth who hasn't actually spent the time trying to understand this guy and what he's all about, his values and character. Instead, people who inherit their opinions and read headlines because thinking hurts. Many people are not big fans of Elon Musk today. Of course, Elon Musk gives absolutely zero f**ks what people think about him, much like myself. He's not going to change and this isn't going to be an issue. In fact, I think over the long term, the opposite may actually occur. Eventually, maybe 10, 20 years time from now, I think the majority of people on Earth will finally realize the truth. Elon Musk is a really good human being with a very big heart and is just trying to do good in the world. Can anyone remind me what the weed on Joe Rogan did to Tesla's execution over the last few years? Oh, that's right, nothing. How about calling out the hypocrisy of a number of politicians in the US? Oh, nothing. Look, Elon's going to Elon and Elon Eloning isn't actually going to detrimentally affect Tesla. It's not like we have a decade and a half of history verifying that claim. Oh wait, we do. Blah, blah, blah. Car industry analyst at Jefferies who believes it is inevitable that Musk will quote, upset people. And I agree, it's absolutely inevitable that Musk will upset people. But Musk upsetting people is not going to have a detrimental effect on Tesla's unassailable lead, their manufacturing prowess, their software capabilities, their AI that you like. Get it? Get it? Good. You know who else regularly upsets people and will continue to do so? This guy. And I uh, hate to point out the obvious here, but still here on YouTube, still on Twitter and still doing okay. In fact, I would argue that it might even be possible that the very fact I'm willing to upset people and share my thoughts, opinions and ideas, tell it like it is, say it how I see it, may in fact be the very reason that you're currently tuning in because you respect the fact that I'm willing to share it and say it like it is. You may not agree with me and certainly there's a small portion of people who get extremely butthurt, mad, unsubscribed, fuck you, dinify, piece of shit, misogynist, sexist, racist, whatever they want to call me, that's fine because I don't really care if a few of these butthurt weenie babies fuck off somewhere else. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I'll be fine. And the same is true of Elon Musk and Tesla. Elon's going to continue to share his thoughts, opinions and ideas. He'll continue to ruffle feathers, kick the hornet's nest and guess what? Going to be a small number of the butthurt brigade who forever refuse to even think about owning a Tesla. They want to avoid every company has got anything to do with. But let's just be honest. These people are in the vast minority. <laughs> From the business perspective, they literally don't matter. In short, there's going to be plenty more people who need attention, validation and approval from the masses, distancing themselves from Elon Musk because he said something that they didn't agree with and that's totally fine. But uh, I'm sorry, Asha, literally no one gives a flying f don't let the door hit you on the way out. Wait, why is this tweet? What, what's going on here? Uh, let's read it anyway. This is from, um, I don't know, some lady, the tick, whatever, tax the rich, but buy my merch. Tired of having to collectively stress about what... <laughs> Uh, Try again. Tired. <laughs> yeah, this is hard. Tired of having to collectively stress about what explosion of hate crimes is happening because some billionaire with an ego problem unilaterally controls a massive communication platform and skews it because Tucker Carlson and Peter Thiel took him to dinner and made him feel special. <laughs> yeah, I don't really understand this tweet either. Hmm. And I don't know why this unrelated tweet has just appeared either from a few days ago from some idiot with three first names who said, the more ferociously mainstream media, big tech, social media and government come at Elon Musk and Twitter, the more they reveal their agenda. It will be a bumpy but super important ride. Many people did not see, notice or understand what was happening. They will now. Wait, what was my point again? Oh yeah, that's right. You don't like something Elon said? Not a big fan? Did he upset you? Well, you are entitled to cry on Twitter and boycott everything to do with any of his companies, but it's not going to make a f***ing difference. In the days since the deal, Musk has fired off several humorous missives, including one saying his next move would be, quote, buying Coca-Cola to put the cocaine back in, which, by the way, is fast on track to being the second or most liked tweet in the history of Twitter. Turns out for every one or two people Elon Musk upsets, it's about 450,000 that think, you know what, that guy's pretty funny and I don't mind him. But he has also targeted individuals with posts including a meme featuring Twitter's current legal head, Vijaya Gaddy, or I don't even know how to say the name, sorry VJ, whatever, um, probably never going to have to say it again after you get the boot. By the way, for those of you who don't know, this is the top lawyer at Twitter who had a very helping hand in the decision that ultimately led to the then President of the United States being removed from the platform. Oh, and also the suppression of a factual story and the banning of an account from a news organization reporting said factual story that surprisingly would likely have had an extremely significant impact on the recent US presidential election. Allegedly, in my opinion, do your own research, blah, 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 blah. P.S. There was definitely no laptop, nothing to see here, move along. 
along, and a promise from Elon to upset one in five users on the most extreme ends of the political spectrum in the name of balance. One suggestion that has swirled since the deal is that China, which has banned the social media platform, may be able to lean on Tesla, which makes roughly half of its cars in the country to influence rules at Twitter. China's foreign ministry has dismissed the ridiculous idea. By the way, this idea was floated by Jeff Pezos. Of all the things to chime in of all the times, Jeff's like, oh, hmm, I wonder if the Chinese Communist Party has now got more influence over Twitter. Then, of course, his team scrambling, hey, Jeff, uh, you might want to walk that comment back a little bit. Anyway, I've covered this in a recent video. Poor Pezos just can't read the room. Ultimately, even the company's harshest critics admit the impact on Tesla's shares, which have soared far higher than the business's improving fortunes, may be muted. Quote, Tesla's shareholders are very forgiving, said Chanos. They may just shrug their shoulders and say, if anyone can do it, Elon Musk can do it, and continue to give him the benefit of the doubt. So to recap, in short, Elon's gonna Elon, people are gonna get mad, not gonna make a difference to any of Elon's companies. And as far as Elon's time and the impact on Tesla, outside of some short-term volatility relating to Tesla stock due to the deal, the sale, the financing, and just general uncertainty in the stonk market, PS, thanks to the buying opportunity, as Gary Black pointed out, this is the perfect time for Elon to be focusing on this. I think the next six, 12 months at most, Elon's spending a little bit more of his time and energy thinking about and implementing changes on Twitter. But as I said earlier, most of this, honestly, just a little bit of software. I'm not trying to downplay it, but it is not even close to manufacturing cars profitably at scale, let alone building rapidly reusable spacecraft. In addition, I believe that about half of Twitter's current workforce, maybe two thirds or more, is completely useless, dead weight, and they have to go. Many, of course, will voluntarily do so because they can't stand to work for this evil billionaire who wants to promote hate speech. <laughs> There is, however, a very, very positive silver lining for Tesla stock. The more uncertainty, fear, concern, and doubts investors have about Tesla stock because they're too dumb to understand how much of Elon's time and energy will actually go toward Twitter and how that may or won't at all affect Tesla, the more potential buying opportunities there might be, at least in my opinion. Unfortunately, I have less than zero money left, so I don't think I'll be participating in any of these fire sales. Unless, of course, anyone would like to donate a staggering amount of cryptocurrency to one of the links in the pinned comment. Please don't actually do that. I mean, I'll take it, but don't do that. You should probably use that money to do what I was going to do with it anyway. Hope you guys and girls have enjoyed the video, by the way. If you're not already following me on Twitter over at Stephen Mark Ryan, feel free. I'm very active over there. And there's a few things that I can say on Twitter that I can't even say here on YouTube. Although, as I said, all the juicy stuff is over on Patreon, card in corner, link in the pinned comment. Loads of videos, well over 100 exclusive pieces of content. New Q&A dropping very soon as well. So keep an eye out for that and I'll see you over there. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support and if you're still watching you're awesome i read every single comment on this channel and i really appreciate your feedback so if you've got any thoughts on today's video questions comments or suggestions for a new video let me know in the comments below check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store join patreon or watch the next video